I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and I I've got a lofty goal I have I have a lofty goal but I also found my earrings that I lost so I mean surely that's a sign that things are gonna be great right like I found my nautical earrings which means I feel much better when I wear my Breton stripes so yeah I feel this is like a blessing for this vlog yeah yeah okay I am woefully behind in my July reading goals. Life has been hectic, but I found my earrings. So, you know, it's all coming up Millhouse now. At this stage in the game, it's Friday. <laughs> the, uh, what, what day are we on? Friday the 26th of July. I have four books I need to finish in order to reach my reading goals for July. And I've got six days left of the month. So my thought process was, well, let's just try and read six books. I think the logic was, I have four books I have to read for prompts for my reading goals. And I'm currently partway through a book that I'm loving, but it meets none of my reading goals other than like my goal of reading a book that brings me joy. And that's five books. And I thought five books in six days, let's just make it six books in six days. And that feels like a ridiculous goal for somebody who is like I work full time and I'm studying for a course in my free time and I've just started a new Stargy Valley farm. My life is bustling right now, <laughs> but it could, it could be doable. I am already partway through three books, kind of. I'll come back to that. So it's really only like three full books and three partial books, but actually I finished one of those books this morning. So really, I'm off to a wonderful start. I've only got five books outstanding now, two of which I'm already over halfway through. At the start of today, I was 60% uh, through Which Way to Murder and Mayhem by Jane Hinchy, but I finished it this morning. So tick, first book done. This book meets my reading goal for a book from my Kindle, for Kindle Crush. So yes we're off to a fantastic start i didn't really love this book though <laughs> so, we are off to a fantastic but also not so fantastic start this was a nice cozy mystery where there's a cat sidekick you know i'm a crazy cat lady i'm um, actually i got these recently these are cat magnetic bookmarks my uh neighbor my neighbor was away and she was like, oh, would you look after my cat while I'm away? And I'm like, oh, your cat who has a special blanket for sleeping on my bed? Yes, <laughs> gladly, gladly I will look after that precious prince. So she got me these to thank me and I was like, I would do it for free. <laughs> you never need to thank me for looking after your cat. It is a gift to me. I will gladly, gladly look after that wee man. So yes, I like books that have cats in them. This is a small town, cozy mystery. We have a woman who is a witch, but she has lost her magical powers because she used her powers in public. She broke a bunch of rules. So she's going back kind of tail between her legs to her hometown after a long, long time away in the big old city. She come back, she's opening a bookshop and she's staying with her grandmother who is so fun really really enjoyed her grandmother character and our main character's like childhood nemesis is the real estate agent is um she's not overly nice but she's not in the book for long because she is our victim and our main character kind of decides that she's going to help solve the case what i liked about this book was the world building i absolutely loved it there's like a magical school where she has to go and like retrain um, in her skills, which we didn't get a huge amount of, but I'm hopeful that there's going to be more. I think this is the start of a series. In fact, I know it's the start of a series. I don't know why I doubted myself. So I think in future books, like, it's going to maybe have more of that skill. I think that's going to be quite fun. And there's a lot of different sort of magical kinds of beings. We've got witches, there are werewolves, there are shifters, there are, like, elves. Very, very, like, a very sort of mixed society which is very very interesting and I love a book that's set in fantasy and is like oh just have the whole gang that was really enjoyable and I really liked the mystery because 
it was very kind of like up in the air and I was like well this person has a lot of enemies it could really could have been anybody and I really liked that it kept me guessing I didn't like the fat shaming or ageism the casual misogyny from the main character this person was just so mean like she was so judgmental and like you know what your grandmother is going out and sowing her oats let the woman live like maybe she could put a robe on but you know it's her house her house i didn't love the main character but i really liked the rest of the book so i feel like i probably would read more books in this series and hopefully like the main character the main character maybe gets a little bit less judgmental and like mean or people call her out on it or maybe we get to focus on other characters but i feel i'm off to a good start so i will come back next time with another update and hopefully i finished another book i'm feeling good i'm feeling hungry i'm gonna go get lunch but i'm feeling good i'm feeling confident yes <laughs> i'll be back soon it is day two of me trying to read six books in six days and first of all i would just like to say my hair is really soft today and um, you can't you don't know that i could be lying but i'm not it's very soft i don't know what happened i didn't do anything different but it's very soft and i'm loving it and it makes me very happy today uh what also makes me happy is i have finished book two i have finished the book eaters by suni dean but what doesn't make me happy is i hated this book um, <laughs> I promise I'm gonna like something. <laughs> this book is set in an alternate version of of the UK where there are these people who are not human but they look human and they don't eat food. They eat books instead and just sort of absorb all the knowledge from the books as their sort of sustenance. And these people can have an a possibility of having children who are mind eaters and instead of eating books they eat minds <laughs> which is not not good not good at all you need your mind our main character Devon has a son who is a mind eater and she ends up kind of fleeing with him because the life of a, a mind eater not not so good in this in this world so she's kind of fleeing trying to find a cure or a treatment that will kind of stop him from wanting to I can't say eat brains <laughs> but he's not eating brains he's, he's sucking minds through people's ears and I was really intrigued by this book the first 50 pages or so I was so in I was like this is building me like a really interesting world that I was excited to learn more about and uh, characters I couldn't yeah I didn't really overly care about the characters but I was like ah you know it'll come but the premise sounded really interesting it was a very patriarchal society that she had grown up in and I really wanted to know more about the world we don't get that there's very little world building so I was left with a lot of questions by the time I was halfway through the book I thought that once again here I was tricked into reading a book that was about motherhood which is fine if that's what you want to read but this book was sort of promising to tell me about book eaters and like a fantasy sort of society and it was quite a grand society and I really wanted to know more about about that rather than a book that was focusing on motherhood as the as the main core of the book because I love hearing stories about my friends and and their I have friends who are mothers they're, they're wonderful people. I like hearing their stories, but I don't like reading books about motherhood. I don't have any interest in, in that, in my fiction. Halfway through the book though, something interesting happened and it hooked me back in because off they were on an adventure and they were going to Traquair House. And I, I'm from Peebles which is six miles away from Traquair House. I think it's six miles, no more than 10. Every school trip, with the exception of one trip where we went to Edinburgh Zoo, every school trip, we went to Traquair House. 
I know Traquair House. I was like, I am so excited for us to go to Traquair House. It kind of annoyed me because this is a gorgeous grand manor home. These amazing maze gardens. It's so pretty and it's so just an excellent setting for a book. I was like, yes, well done. Like I'm, I'm hooked again. But there were lots of little bits that just were wrong and I feel like if you're going to choose a real location, choose a real location that you know or or don't choose a real location and then you can make it up and it's totally fine and nobody's sitting in their bed yelling stop getting bond wrong. But there were moments every so often where I thought I was going to love this book and, and then it just, I didn't. There were a few moments where the language was really weird in that didn't read like it was set in the UK. A lot of like US terminology just sort of peppered in here and there. And I suppose you could have explained that by saying, oh, she'd read, she'd eaten a book that was a, a US book or she'd been eating US papers or like something like that to sort of explain why she was referring to handbags as purses. I always hate when I hate a book because I feel like somebody's worked so hard on this and like, You've written a book. That's the genuinely amazing. But I didn't like it. And I felt tricked into reading it because it sounded super interesting. And then it just ended up being so dull. And I don't know how it ended up being so dull. Like there was a battle. There were crossbows. There were shootouts. And I was just reading going... I was so bored. I didn't like this book at all. And now I feel really bad. Um, but you can't like everything. And and I posted about how much I hated this book. And I had like quite a few people <laughs> message me on Instagram. And it was 50-50. Some people also hated it. And some people absolutely loved it. So do not let me put you off this book because half the people that I know who read it loved it. But I am now two books two books down and still going okay. I'm still hopeful that I'm going to finish another five. Nope. I'm still hopeful I'm going to finish another four books in the next four days. But I'm only partway through another one book. <laughs> so I all this kind of left for me is like three full books and a half book. I'm rambling. I'm going to go and come back with another update when I have one. <laughs> I did not film yesterday because I didn't do my hair and it was greasy and I thought it would be okay but I didn't do it and I didn't feel pretty and I didn't want to film so we're filming today and I'm shiny and the sun is directly in my face so we're making the best of it. I have two books to chat about because I'm still on track for my six books in six days First up, I'm going to talk about the book that I finished first, which is A Cat A Witch by Nettie Okara Four. And I was so excited about this book. This book is about a young woman, a child, it's about a child. She's 12 and she discovers that she has magical power. She's a witch and she has meets these friends and they also have magical powers. And it's just a kind of like, coming into your own with magical powers story the power of friendship and they are tasked with uh finding a serial killer and hunting him down this book was okay i need to stress first of all though i am not the target audience i'm not 100 certain who is the target audience though because it read like a middle grade book and that's not like a slight or or I don't mean that in any derogatory way. It just read in a very sort of familiar way that a middle grade book would. However, the topic was sometimes quite dark. I mean, there's a serial killer mentioned, but in addition to that, there were some quite... There were some moments that I feel were more suited to YA than a middle grade. Like, I don't know how I'd feel giving this book to a middle grade level child in fact I, I know I wouldn't there was a lot of smoking as well the main characters were pretty regular 
smokers, which was surprising because the kids were between the ages of 12 and six, uh, 14, 12 and 14, which is really, really young. And I found that a little bit shocking. I also wonder if maybe I somehow managed to get myself like an unedited or early edition of this book. I bought it second hand, but there were a lot of uh, errors in the book that somehow had been missed. So the main, mainly surrounding the main character and how long she had lived in Nigeria and how long she had been going to her school, because there was part of the book where it said that she had moved to Nigeria when she was nine. And then there was part that said that she had been in the same class as one of her school friends since she was five, but he hadn't moved to Nigeria. So it's not like they were at the same school and then moved to the same school. And then there was a weird moment where she was reminiscing about something that happened when she was, you know, just a, a little toot. But based on the book, she wouldn't have been in that location at that age because she just said she'd been in the US. It was very strange. And it just kept kind of taking me out of the book every time there'd be like a contradiction. And I'm like, you just said something and now you are saying something different. So I have to sort of take that out of my brain to review the book because I'm just going to assume that maybe that got taken out in a further edit. This was a nice, I like a power of friendship story. I like the friendship relationship between the main characters. Sunny, I thought was a kind of like a Mary Sue character but in a in a middle grade book I think that's okay when there's other characters who are much more interesting that kind of like boost the group. I am hopeful that maybe in future books she will come into her own and you know show a little bit more personality. I would like to read the rest of this series. I think there's two more books but I'm not invested enough to seek those books out, like to add them to my to be bought list. But if they're at the library, I would be willing, you know, I'm not opposed to putting in a request to get them. If that makes sense, like I want to read them, but not enough to buy them. <laughs> I love the magic system in this book though. The, I feel like it's so easy to just kind of like half arse a magic system. <laughs> And that happens so often in fantasy and I really like the way that this author really just did the work and thought about their magic system. I felt like I knew a little bit about like the rules, the regulations, their sort of training system, their their financial system. I, I feel like the world building was just excellent in this book, really really enjoyed it. The serial killer element was a little bit of a not clickbaity but it wasn't a huge part of the story it was it was part of it but it was over so so quickly the main the main element of this story was really just about Sunny finding her powers finding her friendship and kind of like her place in the world which is always it's always something that I enjoy reading Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle Tell me what it's about first it is about Rose Darling who is a very religious young woman and she cannot stop spitting up flies, <laughs> mayflies. And she is also kind of being stalked by a figure that she is wondering if maybe that's a demon. And this book also kind of touches on Camp Damascus, which is a gay conversion camp. The book is more about Rose, than it is about the camp, but the camp is definitely involved in the plot. I had never read anything by Chuck Tingle before. My only knowledge of Chuck Tingle was that they are unknown. You know, they always wear like a, a disguise. So you don't really know who they are. And that he writes like bizarre. <laughs> Smart. It's, I don't mean that in a mean way, like erotica. Uh, they all have like fun titles and the his books are just a little bit kind of ridiculous and I've watched a lot of people review his erotica. Everyone seems to have a good time reading his books but I was kind of anxious going in to read a horror like a novel and a horror and I was delighted by this book. This exceeded my I didn't really have a lot of expectations. I was a little bit like 
oh into the unknown I go I love this book this book is a strong contender for me for my favorite book of the year I loved it the author writes female characters so well I felt like I felt like Rose was real and I loved the journey that Rose went through trying to find out what had happened what was happening and she was so like so much inner strength and I really really loved her as a character I thought this book was so creepy and so tense and I could not read it at dark times at dark times in the night when it was dark because it scared me a little bit I I absolutely loved it it was so twisty turny and there were little moments where I was like oh I think this is what's gonna happen and I was like oh wait to the nth degree that's happening I was definitely kept on my toes and I wanted to read this I was the absolute rage I had at myself for having to go to work when I wanted to just sit and read my book I genuinely considered asking to take the day off to read this book and at this point I was in the coffee shop next to my work I was I was I could have connected to my work wi-fi I was so close and I was like I want to stay and read my book but I didn't I went to work and then I finished my book absolutely amazing the writing was exquisite so well written I want to reread this book I need to read a bunch of books between that between then <laughs> now but I definitely will be rereading this. I will be raving about this to my friends at our monthly book blether. Sometimes my friend Amanda watches these videos and if you're watching them, hi, um, I'm going to talk about this book. I hope you look forward to that. <laughs> absolutely loved it. I will be reading more books by Chuck Tingle. This was just an absolute triumph. It gave me everything that I wanted and everything that I needed. I just cannot speak highly enough of this book it was excellent the only negative i have is nothing to do with the actual book uh itself it's the copy i have we're like the the hard it's not even a hardback the jacket is now shaming me by sticking together but like it kept coming on apart from like here so like this bit's just flapping in the wind but it seems to have sort of melted itself but yeah it's not really attached at the spine which has nothing to do with the book it's just sometimes sometimes prints aren't as perfect as you want them to be but the inside of the book was majestic and I loved it and I am now on track I'm still on track for my six books in six days I will report back later well tomorrow with a review of my fifth book in my fifth day hopefully as a plan I'm so hot I'm gonna go downstairs and not be in a very warm room <laughs> it is Wednesday it is the 31st of July and I should be coming to you to say hey here are the last two books that I read but I'm not because I didn't finish two more books I finished one which brings my total up to five books in six days which I think is still good. The final book that I read in July was The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. This is about a librarian called Keela who escapes from the big city. There's like a big revolution a happening and she saves a whole bunch of spell books and returns back to her childhood home. And it's just a cozy, cozy cottage core of a book. I really liked it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was just such a gorgeous atmosphere. I loved the town, the island. It was so just charming. I enjoyed the inhabitants of the island. I found Keela herself to be very, very annoying as a main character. I'm not 100% sure why I didn't like her, but I just found her to be the least interesting part of the book. She had a lot of sort of like self-doubt in her monologues which I mean I'm not going to judge anyone having self-doubt no no I'm, I'm I'm right there with you but I am going to say that if somebody takes the time to like climb up really steep hill to 
build you bookshelves and build you like a new roof maybe this person likes you like not not necessarily romantically but like maybe they are not trying to trick you maybe they're just being kind and neighborly and you know they said that they knew you from childhood so maybe they're just helping out an old friend I really loved Kaz who was like the sidekick. He was a spider plant and was like sentient and could somehow read despite having no eyes and I really really enjoyed him. Overall this was a cute story and it was cosy and it was just lovely but I found it to be too long. I really like you know Legends and Lattes style books which are just you know low stakes, high coziness, high vibes but I felt that this book didn't need to be as long as it was for containing the sort of book that it was. I It was almost 400 pages of low stakes action and I think like if it was gonna have some element of like peril then I feel like the book of course you've justified it being so long but it it, there's a limit to how long you can read something that's quite charming but ultimately very little really happens. Obviously you know Keela's brought some certain things to the village but in the grand scheme of things the plot is 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 quite quite low stakes <laughs> and and I just found myself losing interest every so often because it just went on and on and was quite repetitive but I feel like you know if this book were like 100 150 pages shorter it would have been a solid five stars I would have had such a great time with it and instead I just had an okay time I am just leaving this review quite short because I have a headache and <laughs> the place where I film like it's just in front of my window and the window is like ah here's some sunlight that's just gonna like hammer your brain so I'm gonna finish up just now because I want to go in a room that doesn't have a bright window in my face and maybe get some more painkillers. I finished five books in six days and I feel accomplished. I managed to achieve all of my reading goals for July which was the entire purpose of this vlog and I managed to find a new favourite, Camp Damascus. I am not ready to stop talking about you. And overall, I can only categorise this reading venture as a success. I'd love to know if you've read any of the books that I have enjoyed. And as always, let me know what you have been reading. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!